Laverne and Shirley uh, was, as I don't know that you know this, but it was sold to ABC without a pilot. Usually, I mean, especially then, everything needed a pilot, and you'd do that, and it cost a lot of money. Uh, but the girls were doing Laverne and Shirley as a guest spot on Happy Days, in which they played women of the night, and they dated Fonzie and uh, Richie. And, uh, and it was funny, and uh, Fred Silverman liked it. So this was pilot season, and as he said to Gary Marshall, turn them into a show. And I'll give you a guarantee, you'll go on the air, just get them. So the girls agreed to do it, and Penny called me and said, uh, David, uh, this is strange, but I'm doing a TV show for ABC called Laverne and Shirley. And I said, oh, great. Said, but there's no pilot. I said, oh, that's terrible. You ought to get yourself a pilot. No, 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 you don't understand. If we're doing it, we're just going to do the first episode the way it is, and we're going to, you know, it'll be great. But without a pilot, we don't have any running characters other than Laverne and Shirley. And I said, so? She said, well, uh, I was thinking Lenny and Squiggy, which Michael and I have been doing f since college, just for our own amusement and several other people, she said, I think they might be good last-ditch dates for the girls. I said, really? She says, yeah, I've tried to tell the writers about them, but it does, I, I can't really figure out what I'm talking about. So if you could come to the party tonight, do the characters, and that'll give everybody an idea of it, and it'll be fun, and there'll be free drinks. So I said, I don't know, I'll think about it. I don't know what I was thinking about. And uh, Michael and I were performing... Um, actually at the improv that night we were doing with our group the credibility gap which was a hysterical group and uh, when it was over we I said let's go to penny and rob's house rob reiner was her husband i don't know she says maybe there's a part for us in this new show uh, i don't want to go i won't know anybody there that's what michael said and i said no 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 your wife is pregnant and you've got six dollars in the bank if we do this show we get we get a chance to put Lenny and Squiggy on the air. So we'll do one or two. We'll qualify for maximum unemployment. Okay. So we went to the party. And we said, okay, but only if it comes up. We're so, I don't know what we were doing. Only if, only if that comes up like it would. So we sat down and Rob Reiner turned around and said, so you're going to do Lenny and Squiggy. And the whole party stared at us and quieted down. And Michael and I, we didn't pour a cup of water over our heads and slick back our hair. Or I didn't even take my glasses off. And... We just went into a bit that we had never done before, nor have we ever done since, and everybody laughed. I mean, which was, didn't surprise me, but uh, it just was about, I don't know whether the bit lasted five minutes or 20 minutes, but everybody laughed. And then when it was over, and I went home, and the next day, Gary Marshall, who I don't think was there for it, said, I hear those two guys are funny. Why don't you... Uh, you know, maybe they could be on the show. I said, really? Yeah, Lenny and Marvin. I said, no, no, you can't switch their names. Let's just leave it. Lenny and Squiggy. Make Squiggy German, because we were Milwaukee. So Anthony Squigliano then became Andrew Helmut Squigman, and he was, of course, of German extraction. And uh, Leonard Kuznowski, that's self-explanatory. And these guys suddenly, two weeks later, we were doing them on television. And basically we were in charge of, because nobody really, we, we get jokes like the two of them arguing, which was a bigger number, five or ten. And I'd say, that's not how they spend their stupidity. You know, how dumb are these guys? They don't argue about that. That doesn't cross their mind. That you know, let us handle it. So we were basically in charge of writing well, which number they thought was bigger, but also in charge of writing all the, the jokes and the bits. And, and it was great, you know, we had a, it was carte blanche. If you like the Boomer Tube, why not subscribe? And to see the full interview, check out our Patreon page to become a member. We upload new exclusive content every single week. And you can access our library easily. Thanks.